Hey guys, welcome back to lesson 32 of our study of the Catechism. Let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. O my God, I firmly believe that thou art one God and three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I believe that thy divine Son became man and died for our sins, and that he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe these and all the truths which the Holy Catholic Church teaches, because thou hast revealed them, who canst neither deceive nor be deceived. O my God, relying on thy almighty power and infinite goodness and promises, I hope to obtain pardon of my sins, the help of thy grace, and life everlasting through the merits of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Redeemer. O my God, I love thee above all things with my whole heart and soul, because thou art all good and worthy of all love. I love my neighbor as myself for the love of thee. I forgive all who have injured me and ask pardon of all whom I have injured. O my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins, because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, we're on lesson 32, from the second to the fourth commandments. First question, what is the second commandment? Altogether, the second commandment is... Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. What are we commanded by the second commandment? We are commanded by the second commandment to speak with reverence of God and of the saints and of all holy things and to keep our lawful oaths and vows. What is an oath? Altogether, an oath is the calling upon God to witness the truth of what we say. When may we take an oath? We may take an oath when it is ordered by lawful authority or required for God's honor or for our own or our neighbor's good. What is necessary to make an oath lawful? Altogether, to make an oath lawful. It is necessary that what we swear to be true and that there be a sufficient cause for taking an oath. What is a vow? A vow is a deliberate promise made to God to do something that is pleasing to him. Is it a sin not to fulfill our vows? Altogether, not to fulfill our vows is a sin, mortal or venial, according to the nature of the vow and the intention we had in making it. What is forbidden by the second commandment? The second commandment forbids all false, rash, unjust, and unnecessary oaths, blasphemy, cursing, and profane words. What is the third commandment? Altogether, the third commandment is, Remember thou, keep holy the Sabbath day. 
What are we commanded by the third commandment? By the third commandment, we are commanded to keep holy the Lord's day and the holy days of obligation, on which we are to give our time to the service and worship of God. How are we to worship God on Sundays and holy days of obligation? We are to worship God on Sundays and holy days of obligation by hearing Mass, by prayer, and by other good works. Are the Sabbath day and the Sunday the same? Altogether, the Sabbath day and the Sunday are not the same. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week and is the day which was kept holy in the old law. The Sunday is the first day of the week and is the day which is kept holy in the new law. Why does the church command us to keep the Sunday holy instead of the Sabbath? Altogether, the church commands us to keep the Sunday holy instead of the Sabbath because on Sunday Christ rose from the dead, and on Sunday he sent the Holy Ghost upon the apostles. What is forbidden by the third commandment? The third commandment forbids all unnecessary servile work and whatever else may hinder the due observance of the Lord's day. What are servile works? Servile works are those which require labor rather of body than of mind. Are servile works on Sunday ever lawful? Servile works are lawful on Sunday when the honor of God, the good of our neighbor, or necessity requires them. Okay, these are two awesome commandments. I think pretty easily we can think that the second commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, basically just means don't swear. Or, or it means don't use the name of God in a bad way. But it, as we see, it really means a whole lot more than that. Uh, it really means to treat with reverence anything that we say that we're saying is true. Um, so, like, use our words wisely. Um, and to not make oaths when we don't need to or make them in a rash way. And not to make a, a vow incorrectly. You know, so it's, it's trying to take seriously these things of, you know, the truth of what we say. Uh, now, a, a big example of this I can think of is when we make a vow, uh, like I promise, you know, you can think of a vow, if you think of it as just a promise to whomever, um, you're thinking about it wrong. A vow is any promise that we make to God, and it has to be to do something that's pleasing to him. So if we make a promise to someone like, hey, if you do this favor for me, I'll do anything for you that you want. Uh, that can get us into a pretty bad spot pretty quick because what if the other person wants us to like steal something? Uh, do we have to then do it because we made a promise? Uh, so No, we don't uh, because we're not bound to make promises. Uh, well, we shouldn't make promises if it's if we're promising that we could do something bad. Uh, we should never do that. And um, we can never be held to do something uh, that's morally wrong. Like if you're playing, um, you know, truth or dare, um, you know, and, and you're like, and you say dare, and then you're, everyone's like, oh yeah, go like, you know, do this terrible thing to this person. No, obviously you don't have to do that. And, you know, uh, no one can make you do something wrong like that just because you said, you know, you promised. Uh, no, we should always know that the true vows, which we need, have to keep, are the ones that we make to God, and it's to do something that is always pleasing to God. And we make that promise deliberately, which means freely and fully understanding what we're doing. So don't ever let a group of people, you know, hold you to do something terrible in a truth or dare kind of kind of scenario. All right. 
Hope you guys enjoy the game quiz this week, and I'll catch you next time for Lesson 33. Take care, and God bless.